Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how to solve center of mass style problems, specifically for AP Physics C mechanics style problems and for students who are learning this material. How do you go about tackling one of these problems here? That's what we're going to go about doing. There are a lot of important ideas here and you will probably see a problem like this on your test. So it's important to deal with this and understand what is going on. So first let's read the problem on the left. It says a person is standing at one end of a uniform raft of length L that is floating motionless on water as shown here. The center of mass of the person raft system is a distance d from the center of the raft. So notice that there is an offset. There's an offset from the center of the raft to the center of mass of the system. And the person then walks to the other end of the raft. So it walks from right to left. If friction between the raft and the water is negligible, how far does the raft move relative to the water? Okay, so notice I've gone ahead and drawn an initial part to this. In terms of a diagram, the happy face is going to represent the person, and this is going to be like the final position. So we go from the initial position to the final position. What I do want to point out is this center of mass right here. This is a position, we'll call it X center of mass. Now take a look at the center of mass as the dotted line down the middle. That's going to be the same center of mass for the top and the bottom. That stays the same for the system. Why? This is really crucial. The reason why the center of mass stays the same is because there is no net force on the system causing it to move in any sort of way. There is internal force within the system, so the man is applying a force on the raft and causing it to shift over, but that's just an internal force within the system. So with internal forces, yes, the raft can shift, but the man also needs to shift and center of mass is going to hold the same for both before the shift and after the shift because there's no external net force on the system at all. All right, what else can we say about this? There is an offset from the center of mass, and we're going to call that D for the raft, and then it's going to have some final position over here for the center of mass for the raft, and the question we're trying to answer is, what is the offset from the center of mass of the raft to its final center of mass position for the raft? What's that offset? So let's go ahead and think about this. We do have an equation that's going to look something like this. And I'm just clarifying here what I had spoken about previously, that those two center masses are going to be the same. And we could say, well, what is the center mass for the system? initially well we do have an equation for the center of mass we could say it's the mass of the raft times the position of the raft this is all initial plus the mass of the person times the position of the person over the mass of the raft plus the mass of the person we can solve the problem if we set this value of x equals zero right here we can say what if we allow this position to be zero? And this is common for these style problems. This is a common strategy because notice if we do that, we're gonna eliminate a bunch of unknowns here. And we can, we can continue with the problem then and see what happens here. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna say X center mass for the system initial. By the way, we can do that because we're in charge of the axis, just like any other problem in physics. Sometimes there are problems where if you set your zero point for Whatever axis you're dealing with, I'm thinking specifically of torque problems now, which we'll get to later, but if you set your zero point in an intelligent way, you can eliminate unknowns and make the problem easier. That's what we're doing here. And let's think about what we have. We have the mass of the person. Now the position of the person initially. So we would say that if this is x equals zero, then this position over here would be L divided by two in reference to that zero mark. You see what I'm saying? So we're gonna go about doing that. We're gonna say this is L divided by two, that's the x value for the numerator, and then this is gonna be MR plus MP over here. Now the other thing that we want to put down that's really crucial here is this. This whole thing is equal to D. How do I know that? Well, if you take a look at our diagram here, D is this value, the difference in between the center of the raft, center mass of the raft, and the center mass of the system, that is what D is. And it turns out that our initial position of the center mass of the system is also equal to that. 
So really crucial that we can spot that equality to be able to continue with the problem. Next up, because we know the initial value for this is the same as the final, we can go about and say, well, what do we have here? Well, we can say XCM sys initial is equal to XCM sys final similar to what we just said at the very top line, but we just solve for one of these things. So let's go about doing this MPL over two over MR plus MP. And so that's our center mass for the system initial. And now we can set that equal to the center mass for the final position. And let's start thinking about what this is. Remember, we do have that initial equation given on our equation sheet where we can say, this is gonna be like the mass of the raft times the position x, we could say. I'm gonna say let x equal the distance moved to the right in this case. So we're defining a new variable here. So that's what this position is gonna be, like the final position of the raft, so to speak, plus the mass of the person times, and let's think about the position here. You're gonna have x minus l over two. And so let's think about what that is. Notice that you're going to have some offset, right? Like he moves one full length over. Well, to move one full length over, he would have to move over L over 2 to the left of that final position. So this is hard to think about, hard to visualize, but it's really important to get this down and to think through it. Down below here, we just have the mass of the raft plus the mass of the person. And hopefully you can spot immediately what we can do algebraically to simplify the equation. We can get rid of these values over here. And to simplify, I'm gonna write this over here, mp times L over two is equal to mass of the person times x minus L over two. Okay, so let me move the screen here so we have some more room to work with. And one of the first things we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to want to distribute. So let me spread this out a little bit more. Okay, and one of the things that we do want to do now is start to figure out where x is and solve for x, so to speak. And so let's try to get our x values, say, on the right side and everything else on the left side. Okay, and so what do you begin to notice here? Well, one thing that you probably begin to notice is that we have two of these. So we can add them together and say like we have two of them, but also they're divided by two. Maybe I'll just write it out just to make sure everyone sees what I'm talking about here. So this is gonna be two MPL over two, right? And so these two twos are actually gonna cancel each other out and we still wanna get X by itself, right? So that's what we're trying to do. So you would say mass of the person times L. And let's just go ahead and take that last step there, M over R plus M over P, and just bring my X out to the left, just a preference thing. So this is gonna be where our position is, the final position. And so that's how far the whole system has shifted to the right, is this value. Now, we could ask the question, how does this compare to the previous D value. So if we take a look up here, and let me go ahead and grab this really quickly. Okay, very good. So now we've solved for X, and now we've solved for D previously, and I do wanna just do a visual comparison. What do you notice about the two? Okay, well you can say that X is equal to two times D. It's twice the distance involved, you could say. And so what does that even mean? This X is our offset. This X is the motion of the raft. So let's take a look at our drawing here. X is equal to twice D. So check this out. X is gonna be like the final location of the raft, the center of mass of the raft, like over here, you could say, is gonna be the final X value that we notice. And it's gonna be two times D. So the raft has shifted over as this is our initial position over here. This guy shifts over to the end of the raft, but in the process, the whole raft shifts over. The actual whole raft is gonna shift over. And you could say, what is that offset? Well, that offset is equal to twice the D value, twice that D value here. So that's how to go about using the center of mass equation in thinking about a system like this 
again really important that we recognize the beginning of the problem that because there are no major external forces here then the center mass for the entire system that stays the same you can have internal shifting but the center mass stays the same unless there is an outside external force changing the system which we do not have here so this is an important style problem to think about i do want to say i've done screencasts on basically an entire year of physics as well as most of the year of ap physics c mechanics lessons so if you have any questions or comments down below, please let me know, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.